today's show, we'll talk with the Southeast Missourians political and government reporter Aaron Reagan about some of the biggest news items of Cape Girardeau over the past year. We'll chat with Peter Wynn, the director of the Chris Museum at Southeast Missouri State University, about some additions to the museum's collection. Photographs by Andy Warhol. And we'll talk to the new director of the university's Faulkner Center, Chris Rieger, about some new Faulkner materials that have come into the university's possession. That's ahead on Cape Chronicle. Stay tuned. Is your body holding you back? Where do you think you're going? I want to go running. Not with that knee, you're not. Your bones and joints can say no at any age. Let's not uh, pick her up, what do you say? Yet a lot of people in pain fight back. Use your head. Save your back. My pride, my rules. And regain their lives. You gotta be kidding me. Ooh. Fight for your mobility. Visit anationinmotion.org. A message from the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons. I'll take it from here. It's Cape Chronicle. I'm Jacob McClellan. What were the biggest local news stories of 2013? There were certainly a lot to choose from. I'm joined now by the Southeast Missourians political and government reporter, Aaron Reagan. Aaron, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Now, Aaron, if, when I'm looking back at, at 2013, the, the story to me that really stands out almost really starts in 2012, um, a, a year before, and that would be the resignation of, of Joanne Emerson. Uh, why was this such a, such a surprise to so many of us here in Southeast Missouri? Well, for one thing, the Emersons held on to that seat for a really long time. Um, she had just won an election, I believe the 10th term, for her 10th term, and uh, no one exactly expected her to leave that position um, so soon, I don't think. There was some talk earlier on about uh, a possible job opportunity for her, but I don't think anyone saw it coming that soon. So when, when it happened, everyone sort of looked off and said, well, what next? How do we get another person in that seat? Well, could you kind of run through a little bit kind of the, the dominoes that fell after, after uh, Representative Emerson chose to, to, to resign from Congress? Well, sure, it was really interesting. Uh, actually, the very first day we already had Republican Party um, leaders contacting us and saying, here's who you need to talk to about the committee. Here's what's going to happen. There's going to be a selection of a candidate um, by this congressional committee. And so all those people got in touch with us right away. Um, from, Like I said, pretty much day one, we, we knew who to talk to. Uh, from there, there was a large list of candidates identified up to, I think, 17 at one time. And after that, there were forums, and later on, the, uh, the selection process and this started. Was, th this was a selection process that was really unlike anything we had seen around here before. As far as far as as far as I'm aware of, kind of how were how was the Jason Smith the the guy that eventually won this election? How was how was he selected by the by the Republican Party? Well, he turned out to be one of the people who traveled the district and and really got to know a lot of the committee members. Um, it came at a time where I think that the people on the committee saw an opportunity to get someone more conservative uh, in comparison to Joanne Emerson, who was seen as a moderate in that seat. Um, he also got endorsements from some large groups such as the Missouri Farm Bureau that really gave him sort of a bump up. Um, and even though a lot of people saw it as, well, it's a possibility that you know someone from Cape Girardeau is more likely to receive this nomination, uh, Jason Smith pulled a lot of support from areas like Butler County and Jefferson County that have um, a higher voter turnout and a high number of registered voters, even though the overall, uh, for the overall election, I think it was only like 12% for the whole district. Now, as, as somebody that, that, that reports news in, in, in this area, it was interesting having a very competitive um, election for this congressional seat, because we really hadn't seen that in a while, but the way in which it happened with this uh, Republican committee was was completely foreign to us I think it was something we had to wrap our heads around pretty pretty early on in the process yeah, it really was and I don't think we realized when it all started how personal it was going to become for those committee members 
and for the candidates themselves. Um, they really had to get out and you know meet face to face with all these people and and try to win their vote. Um, you know, it, it would be just like one of these candidates coming to my house and saying, "Here's why you need to vote for me." But you know, actually having to do that instead of just sending mail or sending email or a social media blast of some sort. So. Yeah, I recall talking to one committee member who said they never felt more popular. Um, with, right. with all the attention they that they had been getting. They were inundated, I think it's safe to say. Yeah, yeah. And what's really interesting, um, I think, coming out of that, not only that Jason Smith was chosen as the, nom as the, as the candidate, really, um, for the Republican Party, but who wasn't chosen, which would be Peter Kinder, um, who was probably the highest profile of this group of, uh, of 17 at one time. Um, and just kind of where that, where that leaves him with his, with his politi political future, you know, m moving ahead, which is still kind of a, an unanswered question, I suppose, right now. Uh, it is unanswered. It's, it's sort of uncertain. Uh, just recently, he had thought about seeking that seat in 2014, but had decided against that. Uh, I think that, and I can't say the exact reasons because I'm not really aware of them, but uh, there are a lot of people, I think, from the committee that still hold quite a bit of support for Jason Smith, and you know they feel like they got their man. Um, I think when you know Peter Kinder sort of reached out and and you know heard that back from them, that caused him to take a possibly take a step back. So we don't really know where where he's headed from here. Well, let's talk about something else that's been developing in Cape Girardeau over the last few months, and that's the need for a new police station. I say over the last few months, but this is something that's been mm -hmm. that's been brewing for 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 a while here in the city. Um, what, what are we looking at right now moving ahead with the possibility of, of, of getting a new PD here? Well, they just finished a space study, uh, gave three options, either uh, turn the federal courthouse, old federal building, into a new police station. Seemed like a feasible option, but there could be costs involved because of parking. Another option was to renovate the current police station, add space, or just build a completely new one at 40 South Sprague where the police station is now. Uh, after that, the council came back and said, you know, we'd like to see other options. We'd like to see other areas of the city explored, you know, a place to locate that station. And I think the overall the police department's just hopeful. So. Well, we have uh, only a couple of minutes left, um, and there were lots of things that happened this year in Cape Girardeau, including uh, Clay Waller's, uh, the, the, the conclusion of the Kate Clay Waller and Jackie Waller trial. But also, um, this was a year that we saw um, Hollywood invade Cape Girardeau. Uh, 20th Century Fox was here for Gone Girl. Um, I think from, from, from the window in your office at the Southeast Missouri, <laughs> I mean, you guys had front row seats for a lot of the we filming of this thing. We definitely did. It was very interesting and definitely exciting to get to look out your window and see Ben Affleck and you know some of these other actors and of course the director. Um, there were a few days there we couldn't find a place to park because we had so many uh, we call them looky loos <laughs> <Looky -loos. laughs> trying to get a trying to get a view of the actors or you know at least something that was going on of course there was a ton of local extras involved and even some local people that we would all know that had speaking parts or you know will be recognized when that movie comes out so it was really exciting it was definitely an exciting time for a lot of people to really become mm -hmm involved in, uh, in a, and this is a big Hollywood production. This is going to be, uh, this is one that's really going to be anticipated when it comes out next year. Yeah, uh, I definitely agree. I think there'll probably be a pretty big line outside the Werenberg to go see that movie. <laughs> so, <laughs> now, Aaron Reagan is the political and government reporter at the Southeast Missouri, at the Southeast Missouri newspaper. Aaron, thank you so much for coming by to talk with us. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Ahead, the photographs of Andy Warhol. That's just ahead on Cape Chronicle. One of my biggest passions in life is animals. That's why I've worked with Morris Animal Foundation for over 40 years. Morris Animal Foundation is a world leader in helping animals live longer, healthier lives. Like my favorite, dogs, of course. Well, maybe kitty cats are the best. I also like horses. Some of my best friends are apes. Elephants, elephants are so wonderful. And who wouldn't want to cuddle up with a tiger? Oh my kidding. I love them all. The point is, Morris Animal Foundation is giving animals a healthier tomorrow. You can too. Just show your support at morrisanimalfoundation.org. It's all about a healthier tomorrow. 
and at my age, I'm all about that. To help cats, dogs, horses, and wildlife live healthier lives, visit morrisanimalfoundation.org, where we are advancing science that will create a healthier tomorrow for animals. Our daughter might be drinking or, or taking something else, but we're finding support and understanding at Allen on family groups. Are you troubled by someone's drinking? Call 1 888 4 Al Anon or visit alanonfamilygroups.org. This is Cape Chronicle. I'm Jacob McClellan. The Chris Museum at Southeast Missouri State University now has photographs by Andy Warhol on display. And those photographs are part of the museum's permanent collection. 